Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So today's video, I'm going to show you the best settings for the Bulba 65 inch TV. This is likely also going to apply to their other sizes of TVs from Bulba. Now other companies have their own settings and there are user presets in this thing as well that do work, uh, but if you want to get the total best optimal picture, then these are the settings that I actually found that work really, really great. Okay, um, now the thing, when it comes to the presets, it's a really good picture, don't get me wrong. But we, we started to watch Avatar and on a regular DVD, and it's kind of like, well, this could be a little bit better, so we tried different modes. Um, now this thing defaults to like, to something K. We'll go over that, but it maxes to 4K. Um, however, a DVD player does not put out 4K unless you have a 4K Ultra HD player with a 4K specific DVD video. Then you can get 4K, but you're not getting 4K from cable. You're not getting 4K from satellite systems. Not going to happen, okay? So you, you get 1080p or 720p and it kind of gets upscaled basically. And the picture can look really good, but if you want it to look outstandingly good, then these settings seem to be the best. So we decided to try uh, messing around with a movie we know how it should look. And so uh, we, we did um, Finding Nemo, uh, okay, DVD Blu-ray. And, of course, Blu-ray is a better picture, right? And uh, so we fired it up and thought, all right, well, we're seeing too much brightness. Uh, a little bit of ghosting is happening here when the fish are swimming around. This has got to be cleaned up. And so it didn't matter what preset mode we went to. Some of them were actually pretty good. Coloration was really good. Don't get me wrong. It's got great color on the presets. But... Things were a little way too sharp and a little bit too much backlight. And then I did some studying and backlight should actually be turned to zero if you're in a dark environment. But if you're in a brighter environment, then backlight should be upwards to 100%. I kind of compromised in the middle of the row um, because during the daytime, of course, we have semi-light. Uh, we have blackout curtains in our living room so that we can get a darker thing and we don't have the sunlight coming on our eyes anymore. Uh, so these are the settings that I found for indoor viewing with um, low to mid-level light are going to be your optimal best settings and they should also work um, if you have other light coming in that should work really well. And uh, But I can't show you the TV channel because YouTube will demonetize me same as a movie. Um, so, Need for Speed, of course, it's a game I own on the PlayStation, so that can be in the background, and it's fine. So, let's go through this. Picture mode is going to go to User. Contrast will be at 53%. Brightness will be at 50 Color at 50 Sharpness, absolute zero. Otherwise, you'll see grainy stuff show up that you really don't want. Um, especially when you're playing sniper games, too, but even just sharpness, period. You want it to zero. Tint, of course, is not up for negotiations. It's at zero. Backlit, 50%. Temperature for cool, color temperature is standard. Aspect ratio, uh, you can go with wide. Um, you can also switch that to wide zoom in some cases of some videos that are widescreen, but you get a black border up and down. You can go wide zoom and switch that at any time you want. Noise reduction, this is uh, video noise. Um, you want that in the around the middle area. Um, open HDR you want as automatic. Okay, now that takes care of this setting. So now we want to go back again. And now this setting has to be done for each bus. So right now we're, we're doing the HDMI 2 bus because it's active. Each bus line that you have active for HDMI, including your VCR or if you have anything into the component area for AV, that will also be the settings you'll have to change. Okay, now I'm using the exact same settings on all three bus lines and I find it just great. In fact, Finding Nemo is like hilariously awesome. 
Okay, like, it's just... And I don't mean hilarious and funny in a bad way. I mean, it is super sick. It is really good. Uh, anyways, into the main setting menu. Language, of course, English, or whatever language you're using. On-screen display time I have is always this way. I can keep the menu up, and I don't have to worry about it flicking off on me. HDMI EDID. Now, 1.4 is the bus line. 2K is the viewing area. Now, this is a PlayStation 4. Um, it does not do 4K. It only will do 1080p, and things get upscaled, basically, right? And so you're upscaling 1080p into even a 2K level. Now, we can actually go to 4K 2.0 and see what happens, and it's still going to show... And it's a little bit different. It could be a little bit clearer or it could be a little bit less. It's kind of, you know, your opinion on what you think of the picture. I've been leaving this on 2K because there's no sense upscaling any further because it really doesn't help in sniper games to go to that 4K area on a PS4. Uh, link setup, you can leave that alone. Time, you can leave alone. Reset, leave alone. Text to speech, you can also leave alone. So these are the settings that are going to give you the best optimal picture. Okay, now you'll notice that we don't also get to go to the left side and scroll that menu. There is a way around this. If you hit escape and you hit the bottom, I believe it's the bottom button here. No, top button. Top button, it's got like this little um, round circle starry thing. It's one of the four buttons that's around the OK and directional button. Um, if you press that, now you can get into each area. Now I also want to show you sound mode as well. Um, user mode for sound. Now keep in mind, LCD TVs do not have high output audio, and their audio does tend to suck regardless. They're not got a lot of bass in them, and all that other jazz. So um, you are going to want to definitely go out with any LCD TV to a sound bar with or without a sub, or into a home stereo system. Now this particular TV does have digital audio out, but the speakers remain on. There's no way to shut them off, uh, and it sounds horrible uh, doing it that way through digital audio. But if you go through the headphone jack, you actually shut down the internal speakers and go direct into your stereo equipment. Um, that actually works the best. Uh, so here's where we also don't have a boatload of audio output through that headphone jack, even though we're going into a home stereo. Uh, that has a lot of wattage, um, it is lowered. So we're going to have to make one other change here. So let's go across into here to the user area. This is called the equalizer. It's a five band EQ. And you'll notice everything's at 100%. That's where you want it. If you want a custom tailor, bass, mid, and treble from there, you need to do that at the end of your stereo, not at this end. Just This is called flat response full out, is what it is. Everything is basically at a flat response level, about 100% of everything, and it sounds fantastic. And it gives you more audio signal being pushed out through the bus and into your to your stereo system. Okay, so that's that's a big one there to do that. Um, now I gotta probably have to escape out of that one. All right, so settings again there, locking system. You don't have to worry about locking your TV up unless you want to keep your kids out of something that this is for. I haven't read about it, so I don't know what it does yet. Program, antenna mode, air. So you can actually hook a coaxial cable up to this for antenna mode. Uh, so you can go with either a, uh, you know, one of those rabbit ear antenna systems or that's where your cable input would go. We use HDMI on our satellite, so we don't need to worry about that connector. Network, of course, is for your Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Um, because this is a smart TV, you can surf the internet, do Netflix, all that other jazz, um, you know, and of course, system updates. And I did do a system update check on this TV, and the software is up to date. You can also do a software update via USB, just download the file uh, from your computer and into this, uh, especially if you don't want to have access to the Wi-Fi network and doing smart TV kind of stuff. Netflix is in here as well. There's some stuff on there. System information. Um, the system information is not a whole lot. It tells us uh, what our software version is now. It doesn't even tell us, if, are we running Android? Are we running WebOS? We don't know. Um, but we might actually just copy that down later at some point and search out that software version and that'll tell us what operating system we're actually running here. 
because um, even the box didn't tell us. Um, anyway, so we have an ARM quad-core processor, triple-core GPU, 1.2 gigahertz frequency. The model is a 65S VL20 is the model of the TV. And it has, you know, your usual Mac and Wi-Fi Mac addressing stuff. RAM is one and a half gig. ROM is a four gig. Kernel version 4.9.44. Kernel version is usually relatable to the operating system, so we'll have to search that out. But those are your best optimal settings to get a really sick, awesome picture out of this thing. Um, and you will definitely notice with that sharpness control when you're messing with it alone, how much smoother and beautiful your picture is getting as you bring it towards zero. Okay. Um, the sharp has got a lot of sharpness and uh, you know it's kind of like crazy so you don't want to have that so with these settings gameplay is is smooth it's really nice so let's do a little bit of driving for you and again this is just a regular PS4 uh, PlayStation it's not the PS4 Pro it's not 4k stuff or any of that but this is really nice and smooth. The graphics are so much cleaner now with these settings. Like, I thought it was really great to begin with until we started playing Blu-ray movies. And then I noticed it, and I'm like, wow. And then we're starting to watch TV. Um, and it's like, okay, well, the TV looks really good, but I'm seeing that some stations were a little grainy, so I went to the HD channel. HD channel was improved, and I thought, all right, okay, so we've got some improvement, but mm, it can't be just that. It's got to be a setting somewhere, and that's when we started messing with the settings after watching Avatar and, of course, Finding Nemo. Now, I will say this, too. Um, if you're running a Blu-ray movie, you have to run it in that 2K area um, on the settings because if you switch it to, to 4K it scrambles the picture and it looks horrifyingly like really super bad like you're not even going to be watch, watching your movie so you got to drop it down with 2K because you can only put out 1080p on DVD unless like I said you have a 4K Blu-ray DVD Ultra HD player specifically and we are going to be buying one because we want to um, and besides, I bought a 4K TV because I wanted to watch 4K movies, preferably. I'd love to watch 4K TV, but that doesn't exist at this point in the game. Um, probably never will, who knows. Um, but uh, I do want to watch 4K movies to get that 4K experience. Now, we also have The Last Starfighter on DVD, Blu-ray, uh, and regular version. And i got to tell you, even watching it, uh, on that 2K level setting, because uh, that's all we can do with the DVD that we have anyways. Um, it, it's night and day between the DVD version and the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray looks so much better. But again, the settings I gave you guys at, on the beginning of this video, you need to use these exact settings on each item that is plugged into your HDMI buses. So 1, 2, and 3, and your composite, all the exact same settings. And you are going to get a really, really awesome picture uh, out of this thing. And you know, you've got to tweak some TVs anyways. RLG TV, we never had to tweak the video. But we did have to, of course, tweak our audio a bit for the output range. Um, but that's kind of a standard operational thing. Uh, but our video settings from LG, their presets with their displays seem to be really, really good. Like, very good. Um, so no complaints there at all so didn't even have to bother with user stuff but on this one we in the end we did um, so anyways uh, do stay tuned as well to the channel there will be an update review on this thing probably in about six months to a year um, where we'll do a long-term uh, review update to let you know how things are going if there was any problems but so far this thing ever since we redid the settings to our setup Everything is fantastic, even with the audio output. I don't have to turn the TV part up that much to push signal now into my stereo to get things going really obnoxious through the stereo, which is great because now I can keep my stereo turned down a lot lower and still get more output. But it does take those audio settings to do it that I showed you. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you in today's video. I want to get back to Need for Speed for a little bit and play around. I will have some more Far Cry 1 videos for you guys uh, soon, I hope. I just got to 
get away from this thing a little bit. It's a little on the over addictive side. Um, I'm really loving the PlayStation, especially Need for Speed um, Payback. It's totally awesome. So, anyways, till next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. If you're not subbed, do so, please. And also click that bell for notifications for uh, upcoming videos. We'll have a lot more tech stuff coming. Spring is just around the corner, we hope, soon enough. Uh, March is coming, so hopefully spring comes with it. And, uh, of course, that means outdoor fun. See ya.